Hello, if you've seen previous videos or if you've tried LLM wear out yourself, you may have noticed that many use cases do require the use of Mongo or Milvis or some vector database. In this video, we're going to be talking about some compelling use cases that require no database at all and just LLM wear installed. So I'm going to switch over to my editor. I have the LLM wear GitHub repo uh, cloned or forked locally here. Um, as always, I recommend doing this only because you'll have access to all of our examples uh, locally here very easily. In this case, we have an example called working without a database that we'll be taking a look at today. Uh, let me get my view here, hopefully more readable. Um, this example has, as you'll see, several different methods in it. I won't be covering them all today. Um, I'll cover a few and then you can take a look at the rest at your leisure. This first one we're particularly excited about. Um, we call it analyze contracts on the fly, but it actually could be any type of document. But let's imagine you've got some number of contracts. It could be a few, could be dozens, hundreds, thousands, and you want to take advantage of AI or LLMs to do some sort of analysis on those documents. So that's what this code uh, does in relatively short order. Um, in fact, it pretty much fits on a page as we'll see here. So I'm just going to step through quickly what this does, and then we will uh, run it and see what happens. So first of all, like many of our samples, we do need some documents to start from. So we load the LLMware sample files with this call, and then we create a variable called contracts path, which we're going to use later, which is just a pointer to one of the folders in there called agreements. Uh, this folder contains a handful of employment agreements, which contain information about uh, employment terms and salary and other things like that. So the next step, we are going to create a prompt. In this case, we are going to be connecting to Anthropic's Claude Instant V1 model. Um, again, we pass in the API key here. Like most examples, it assumes you've got that already set as an environment variable, um, or you can just paste your, you just edit this code and paste in your API key directly here. Um, but that's all we need for the prompt. Um, the actual question or um, prompt we're going to be sending to the uh, model is, hey, we want to know what's the executive's annual base salary. This is going to be a different answer in every document because each of these employment agreements is for a different person, basically. Um, and then we're just going to simply loop through all the contracts that we find in that folder, that contracts path we created earlier. And we're just going to uh, do a certain set of steps for each one. And those steps are, we are going to add that uh, document. So again, we are looping, we're pulling out a specific contract, and we're saying to the prompter, add that document from the contracts path, named contract, um, add that as a source. And don't just add the whole document, do also a quick query for base salary and get out the, the contextual pieces of information, the chunks or the blocks out of that document that have anything to do with base salary. And so we are going to uh, set our context that way. Then we're simply going to do the prompt. We're going to send it out to, again, Claude Instant V1. Um, and we're going to ask it this question, what is the executive's annual base salary? And we're using one of our specific prompt types. Um, again, we have something like 30 of these. In this case, we want a specific number answer. We don't want flowery language back. We don't want an essay. We just want to know what's the salary. Um, so that this prompt will add additional uh, context to the uh, prompt that gets sent to the model that makes sure that they answer that way. And that's it. So then we, we start to get some responses back. And then there's this really powerful bit, which will make more sense once we see the output. Um, but we provide uh, several different ways to fact check uh, responses that come back. This is becoming increasingly more important as people are building more and more workflows that talk to LLMs, you really need to know, is the answer coming back uh, valid? Uh, did the model hallucinate? Um, and so on. So uh, you'll see this in context in a few seconds and what this fact checking can get you. And then again, in the loop, we're handling one document in this case, so we're gonna clear the source materials to get ready for the next loop. 
And then we're also going to save state. So everything we just did here will be saved and can be audited later. And then we loop again and we do the next contract and the next one and the next one. And so we're just making repeated calls out to uh, the Claude Instant V1 model, asking each time, what is the executive's base salary and passing in a different context window from a specific document. Okay, so let's run this. Um, one thing I would recommend is don't just don't just run the examples as is. You can, but um, in in cases like this, as you'll see at the bottom, all the um, by default, all the uh, methods will be run one by one. Um, and so, if you're interested in a particular one, feel free to just you know comment out the rest and just make sure the one that you are interested in runs. So that's what I'm going to do here. We just want to run this one to start. So I'm just going to run Python examples. Uh, and again, the name of the file is working without a database. And then we're just going to see what happens. And we can scroll up and follow along in the code again. So we are loading the sample files. This is what's taking a few seconds here, um, just to make sure we have all the, the files locally. But then in short order, we're going to start seeing some responses coming back from the model. Uh, in this case, again, Claude Instant V1. Uh, this will run for a few more seconds, and then we'll take a closer look at the results. Okay, we're done. So let's take a look at what got printed out for each document that was found. So here we are analyzing a particular document, uh, and it's, it's an employment agreement. Again, we're asking the question for each one, what's the executive's base salary? This is the answer the model came back with, a nice crisp number. That's all we asked for. And then the fact check that I mentioned earlier, this is, this is the really important part um, if you really want to validate uh, data coming back. So we are calling a very specific type of fact check. We want to fact check numbers in this case because we know that's the type of data that we're sending out. We have different types of fact checking you can use, but in this case, we're using numbers. And so this is what the fact check does for us. It will go out and it will look for this answer in context in the given document. So this is showing us the exact line of text, the sentence or the sentences where the uh, answer came from. So this is a really quick way, really easy way to sort of uh, root out any hallucination. If, if you can find the answer squarely in context that was in the uh, document, then, then you're in pretty good shape. So hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully you could imagine how powerful this could be if you were searching across documents where perhaps the format is not the same. Uh, maybe base salary is called uh, compensation in one document or base pay in another. So you really take advantage of the semantic capabilities of an LLM by, by doing analysis this way. Okay, so that's one. Let me jump to another one. We have two examples here that show off how easy it is to get some parsing done. So let me bring my view back into the hopefully readable form here. Okay, so we have one that's called parsing with no library and another that's called parse all to JSON. And these are both about parsing documents, but done in, done in different ways. So here in the parsing with no library, um, again, we don't have to create any library because that's what the point of this is. Um, we are simply going to load some sample files, as always, if they don't exist. Um, and then we can create a parser, and we can just start parsing things. So if you have a folder that you know contains files of a specific type, then you can very easily just call the specific methods and pass in the paths to the folders that you want to um, uh, pick up the files from. And some of the key parameters here, you'll notice we're saying do not write to a database. Uh, by default, this is true. So we will try to write to a, uh, in this case, a Mongo. Um, but in, uh, again, we're showing off here what can be done without a database. So we're setting that to false, which means the output is just going to simply come back and you'll be able to, to interact with it or pass it on to other LLM where uh, APIs. Um, and so you can do that for PDFs, for offices, for websites. Um, we also support AWS transcribed transcripts for you know recorded um, audio, things like that. So you can that's one way of doing parsing. That's that's really if you know the type of documents that you want to parse and you maybe want to be very specific about it. There's another way, which where you then you'll notice how short this code is. Again, we are loading a very specific bunch of sample code, in this case, um, 
from the small library folder in our in our sample files. And here we're using this method called ingest to JSON, which just takes any file type, any supported file type it finds in the given folder, and we'll parse it. And we'll give you back a JSON view of all of the information that was pulled out. And so that JSON information contains the text, it contains metadata, where the text was, what page number it was on. It will often include uh, metadata about the document author, if we can pull that out, things like um, this author created this PDF or, or this Word document. So very, very powerful ways to get started uh, with parsing and extracting data out. Um, and so, yeah, I'll just run these quickly and we can see them in action too. So let me get back to here again. I'm going to go to the bottom of my view and I'm going to just uncomment the ones that I want to run. So maybe we'll do both of these and I'll just run again the same, same one. So here we, and let me go up to the code again so we can follow along. Uh, first thing we are loading the sample files. Uh, again, takes a couple seconds each time just to make sure you've got the latest and greatest sample files. Then we're going to start parsing. So here we've started to parse PDF files. Um, now we're on to the office files. Now we're on to the website. Website parsing can, you know, depending on the site you give it, can take um, can take some time. And the other types of parsing have kicked off here too. Uh, we parsed some AWS transcribe transcripts uh, and we saved all that state. Um, and we're already on to our next one here where we're parsing uh, everything that we find in, our, in this small library folder. And all of that's done now. And you can kind of see here is all the files that were picked up and parsed and the total number of blocks or chunked data. So again, you know, this, this is not really a, a use case unto itself, simply parsing documents, but it's a way to quickly understand how to call these APIs in LLMware to get your parsing done quickly, because usually parsing is one of the first steps in most AI uh, workflows, especially ones that are data intensive. Okay, and then the last one I wanted to show you in this video was um, the prompt instructions that we have. Um, you've seen these in some of the other videos, but it's probably helpful to get a sense for how powerful these prompt instructions are. Um, let me again go back into my uh, view here. Oops. Here. Okay, so this example, um, this starts with some uh, text that uh, I think we just pulled this from Wikipedia about Joe Biden. Um, and all we do in this example is we iterate through all of our different prompt styles. And again, you've probably seen these before, but things like only give me back a number or give me back a poem or give me back a, um, you know, explain to me like I'm five. We, we have 30 or so of these. And so it'll iterate through every single one and ask the exact same question, who is Joe Biden, but with that different prompt style. So you can really start to see the difference that these prompt styles will uh, result in. Um, so let's run this and see what we get. Um, again, I'm going to go to the bottom of this file here. I'm going to comment out the ones we just ran and uncomment this one we want to try and then just run. In this case, we don't have to look at the code because it'll print out exactly what it's doing each time. And, and as there's probably going to be 30 of these, as I said, but each time we'll print out the name of the prompt style. And then you can see the exact uh, answer that came back. So um, you can see how wildly different they are in some cases. Here's the one with bullets and it ha obviously has bullets um, and so on. So let's just wait for this to finish and then we'll maybe review a few. Okay, so this is finished. So hopefully as you saw some of those go by, um, you, you got a sense for, for the type of capabilities here. But um, for example, some of them just make sense. You know, this one we say write a headline. And so this is the headline that came back uh, from the model. 
Um, let's see. We asked it to make a joke. Why did Joe Biden carry a ladder to his campaign events? Because he wanted to raise his chance of winning. Uh, no one's ever accused LLMs of being funny, but at least they're trying to make jokes. Um, here, here's one that, you know, we've added called explain as if I'm a child, um, which at first seems silly, but what we're finding is a lot of people are asking LLMs about concepts or topics that they don't know much about. So this is actually a much more powerful prompt than, than we, I think even we first expected, um, we find it gets used a lot, especially when you're learning about a topic, because it actually does help to get something explained to you like you're a, like you're a child in some cases. So again, I'm not going to go over all of these. Some of them are very silly, like write a poem. We've added this just to, you know, just to show you the power. Um, and then you'll also find in this example, if you wanted to create your own custom prompt, you can do that as well. So you don't have to just live with the 30 we've created. Um, you can add your own. And this example here, I won't run it, but it will show you how to do that yourself. So um, there are many other things you can do without a database, and we'll probably be adding over time to these examples. But I hope this video has given you a, a quick view into what you can do with LLMware uh, right out of the box with no database. Thank you.